step into the incredible, amazing future as we go exploring tomorrow. And now, here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, John Campbell, Jr. This story is about four men on a spaceship, the Constanza, bound out to the colony planet Okefenokee. It's a swampy planet, gravity about one and a half times what we have here on Earth. Temperature, oh, 100 degrees all year round, with about 85% humidity. A, a really rugged place to live. But some people wanted to live there. The trouble was, they had lots of plants, uh, but there weren't any insects, and the fish weren't fish yet. Uh, give it another 300 million years, and it would evolve the kind of life we've got here, but it hadn't gotten there yet. So something had to be done about this to give them a little meat to eat. But since it was all swamp, we couldn't bring in cows exactly. So they had settled on an expedient, something that would really work on a swampy planet like that. Where's that extra passenger in his emergency cargo? I'm right on the front side. Hey, you, down there. Uh, here I am, Captain, down here with my truck. If you'll send your crew to give me McDonald's a hand... McDonald's, debris! Get down the gangplank, get this earth lover and his cargo loaded in. Aye, aye, Captain. What's in his crate, Captain? What's in your crate? Duck. About 20 minutes later, 50 ducks safely ensconced in Section 5 of the Constanza. I'm John McDonald, ship engineer. Well, thanks very much, Mr. McDonald. Max. Lowbridge. Uh, thanks, Max. Never been in space before. No, I... Heads up. You are now. The mass time converter shifted in. Close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Oh. Captain's gone up into D on the automatic out of low. We're aimed at a point near Charlotte and Scorpio. My stomach. Pass in a sec. Anybody else, Buster, you ain't got no stomach. Back to anybody standing still on Earth, you don't exist. I'm a veterinarian. Well, that's why they sent you to take care of the ducks. The cargo manifest calls you Dr. Drake. Oh. Dr. Ruin Drake, ain't you? I'm an MV. Well, yes, human beings. Oh. All right, yourself, Southern Doc. Takes two or three deep space excursions for your stomach to adjust. I... See, we're moving 10,000 times the speed of light. We make Okie in 18 weeks. Otherwise, without mass time turbomatic, she'd take us 18 years. Matter, Doc, where do you want to go? I must. Oh! Watch, Doc. You ain't adjusted to the gravity effect yet. I'm. I must get to Section 6 to check the incubator. Uh, they have not to send you, Doc. You're a bookman. You ain't for space. Here, I'll give you a hand. Uh, Go ahead. Lift, then low. What do you see there? 5,000 crashed and fertile frozen eggs. Electric incubator. Electric brooders. The duck and ration. Type A. Uh-huh. And the type B. Uh, here's the feed sack. And the adult duck ration. Here. 3,000 pounds adult duck breeding ration. Uh-huh. All here, see? Relax, Doc. You got 18 weeks. I have to see the captain first. And then there was the time on Trifat. She's a little planet to the west of the dark uh, star. Captain. Some disease that wiped out nine tenths of the masculine population. Uh, captain Dombrowski. Oh, come in, come in, man. Close the cabin door. Well, the men were left. Well, they were. Well, come in, Drake. These men were in pretty sad condition. Naturally, we... what's so doggone important? I can't finish my story. This is Rita, Dr. Drake. Hello, Doctor. Pleasure. Uh, Captain, I wish to make my report. Rita DeVry is my astrogator. All right, is everything ship shape back in five and six? All your ducks, incubator, and brooder, and feed stored as you directed, Captain. Thank you, sir. Well, then I remember the uh, red headed dancer in Luna City. She did a space hula that she learned from the immigrant Hawaiians who colonized Waikiki Yamada. I'm telling you, she had... You look a little space green there, Drake. Yeah, what, Mac? Tell the doc I think he's got a sick duck. I'm in Section 5. They've come out of the sedative? I don't know what you gave them to keep them quiet coming aboard, but they're all alive and eating. Forty-nine of them anyway. One looks sick. I'll, uh, I'll be right back to you, Mac. How do you tell a sick duck when he don't quack? I'll <laughs> be right back. <laughs> <laughs> when he don't quack. <laughs> Which 
Which one? This, this year, feather friend. Uh, Come here, little. Me? Don't quack. Slight infection. Uh, huh? uh, scratch near this eye. Mm. Uh, huh. Bite. Still has bite. <laughs> Scratch. It's infectious. Pride infection. I better separate this one from the others. They'll pick it and put in here. Doc, you have to keep it so hot in here. Hold them. Uh, I'll take my jacket off. Much colder out in the passageway. I'll take them up to my cabin. Hundred degrees. You're keeping it in here. Yeah, Captain. Get back up front, Max. Stop the ship. We're ready for star fix and positional check. How's the quack quack? <laughs> I don't understand, Captain Dombrowski. Want me to take that sick duck up, Doc? Save you the trip. You want to check all these others. I don't understand what's so funny about propagating a species. But keep it wrapped warmly in my coat. I'll put him in your cabin for you, Doc. Safe and sound. I just don't understand. And those stories he tells of a girl on every planet. You just don't understand the space her and man, Doc. Ah! Hey, what, what, Max? Uh, Doc! Look out, he'll catch cold! Look, he flew away! Well, he, he must have flown back along. Uh, come on, this passage, this way. This passageway branches, the left goes into the high voltage, high amper room, and the right. Oh! She's a class C colony. All they've got are 80 eggheads, like you. Well, they shave with sand. They're lucky they got shoes. Jim, over here. Uh, yes, Captain. Uh, yes? Then we'll have to make the best of it. They've got enough food on board. The only things now are the mass time tribomatic and all the leads to the cryogenic section. You mean the refrigerator, the one my eggs are in? Yeah. Your 5,000 frozen eggs. 18 weeks of repair ship to get here. 5,000 rotten eggs! <laughs> Four men are in trouble, but uh, Dr. Ruin Drake is in more trouble because he knows a little more about the score than the others. He knows something about those eggs, which are no longer frozen. He knows that each one of them is worth about $2,000 apiece, and somebody's got to do something about them, and how do you do it in a spaceship? The others think they have answers. Oh, my. Do you know what this means? H2S. These aren't ordinary eggs. Hydrogen sulfide. When eggs begin to stink, they really stink. And we're working on emergency air purifiers. Captain, you can't dump the eggs into the disposal if that's what you're thinking. Look, Doc, I've had cargo go before. When it spoils, I dump. Mac, you sure you can't from the refrigerator? What else can we do, Doc? What do you normally do with fertile eggs? Here, on board, in these crowded quarters. Drifting in the star sea. Eighteen weeks, Mike. Eighteen weeks, Captain, till the repair ship. Let's get started incubating. Doc Drake knew that basically he was to blame. After all, he'd worked with those super-powered ducks for that super-powered planet they were going to, and Mac hadn't. But now it was a job of getting the process of incubation started. 
First, the egg cases had to be removed from the refrigerator. They had to be thawed just properly and put into the automatic incubator. Normal duck eggs are incubated 101 to 103 Fahrenheit. Now, what's normal days. about you or your egg? These require 129 degrees for only 21 days. Uh, turn on the incubator auto heater. On the sixth day, Drake candled the eggs to see if any of them were infertile. Thirty-two showed no signs of life, and so out the disposal they went. The captain sort of calmed down a little. It seemed to him things were under control now. This was his mistake, as Doc Drake knew. You see, as long as they're in the refrigerator, you didn't have to pay any attention to them. But once they started incubating, this was where the work began. The very... Yes, Doctor. DeVries, as the ship's astrogator, as a man who still uses his head for more than something to scratch, DeVries, I don't know what to do. I have... There's a terrible problem coming up. The captain's going to hit you even more. That isn't uh... my real problem. After all the ducklings hatch out, by the time the repair ship gets here, they'll all be big adult ducks. Oh, my. An adult duck needs... Here, here. Uh, uh, where? Uh, uh, pencil. Uh, pencil, quick. Uh, use this. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, 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 an adult duck needs 8,000 square centimeters of space. The adult ducks will need 4,000 square meters of floor space by the time they grow 4, up. 4,000 square meters. That's nearly the entire deck space of the ship. I heard one day a gentleman say that criminals who are cut in two can hardly feel the fatal steel and so are slain without much pain. If this is true, it's jolly for you. Your courage grew to bid us adieu. What are you drinking? That bottle says lens cleaner. The only alcohol we're allowed in space. What do I think the captain will do when you tell him? He'll kill you. This is Bill Goodwin. You know, someone once said humor is a true democracy, and that's why we Americans can smile when we tell the stories of the legendary heroes who helped to build our country's great institutions and industries. Like old Pecos Bill of the cattle industry. Now, when Bill was a year old, he was crawling around the ground one day when a swarm of mosquitoes swooped down. Bill crawled under a fat rendering kettle, and when the first mosquito hit it, his stinger went clear through. Quick as a flash, Bill whipped an axe out of his diaper, and he bent the stinger back like a nail. He did the same to the other mosquitoes till the outside of the kettle looked like a plum pudding filled with raisins. When Bill was 14, he invented the lariat, the roundup, and the branding iron. And his special brand has become the heritage for all American cattlemen, IXL. Yes, it is a democracy which lets us tell stories of such legendary heroes with a twinkle in our eyes and a chuckle in our throats. So long as we continue to laugh together as a people, ladies and gentlemen, we will live together as a nation. Weeks passed. More weeks. The brooders were taken outside and hooked to the outside of the Constanza. That means of magnet clamps. To make room for the older birds as they increased in size. By the end of the 16th week, the Constanza was full of ducks. Four men and nearly 5,000 ducks. From engine room to control room, there were nothing but ducks. Ducks that waddled and quacked and flapped. They moaned freely through the no longer so huge ship. All the doors were left open now, except for those which were thankfully sealed off for the purifying engines, heaters, and control rooms, and, of course, the sleeping compartment. But everywhere else, ducks. Thousands of ducks. I... I really can't stand this much longer. I want to do my part, but the heat, the humidity is so hot. All this one-and-a-half gravity, even to... Just a foot, it's... Astro, I'm an astrogator, not a sanitation man. Drake, huh? Doctor Drake, do hmm? these ducks have to eat so much? Oh yes, they seem to be thriving, don't you think? What the devil do you think you're doing, Doctor? The disposal's clerk. Well, Captain, I've just been dumping all this. Dumping the... what? Duck uh, excrement. Out of my way, you crummy turkey! Thanksgiving's over, Chuckler. 
You darn dopey landlubbing oddball. You knew that the disposal was clogged. Yes, sir. It couldn't take the load. You've been pushing tails full of this stuff out through the airlock. I can't see out of my control port windows. By the 16 moons of Sisyphus, I... Hey, Captain, uh, uh, ca- Captain, let you me go. You uh, Don't you know the laws of elementary gravity? Don't you know you can't throw anything away? Hey, it's Captain! Right. That's right, Doctor Newton's law. Mass attraction. It just floats back. Flies back. And anyway, shut up, you. You've been too sympathetic to this quack all around. Uh, what did you call me? Quack! Quack! You're nothing but a quack! I'm fed up, fed up. Oh! Oh! Uh, Put up your hands. Put them up. Put them up. I'll, I'll, I'll teach you. You never liked me. You've been at me ever since I loaded on board. I may not be your size or weight, but I... Stop it. No, he wants to fight. Let my arms... Let me alone. I've had enough. You got any lens? cleaner lens? Stand up. How is he? Shock. He hates me. Kill he hates me. If you had to hold his arms, he wouldn't let me get near enough to give him this hypo. Mm, I don't know. Well, I'm a little bit sick of swallowing duck feathers, too, but... Look, uh... Dr. Drake is in a jam. Trouble. So am I. So is McDonald, the ship's engineer. But not nearly as bad as the skipper here. Oh, oh he's just turning over. No, he'll sleep with the drugs. Because the ship's been disabled. We don't have any reasonable explanation for it. I mean, to the interstellar commission. The Constanza, this ship's Dombrowski's whole life. Now the ship is wrecked. For the first time in his whole career. And, mister, this man's been astronautically around. But what did I do? For the first time in his career, Dombrowski's had to call for help because his ship was out of position. Mac and I are responsible because, well, Mac let the duck get away from him and... I shouldn't have left that back passageway cover case on the D.C. lead open. Who'd ever have thought a duck... I see, and I'm not responsible at all. Not as far as the Interstellar Commission is concerned. Your cargo. I know you well enough to know you'd gladly take responsibility if you could. Captain! Oh. Is it... Sleeping. Uh, what is it? Now? I get a blip on your radar scope. You better come look. On the outer eye of F, she comes alive. Send it to us. Does that mean another ship? Come on, come on, Devries. Yeah, a week ahead, at least a week. Yes, the radar blip was the emergency repair ship Stromaglia, which took the Constanza in space tow and landed her on Okefenokee. The colonists were more than glad to see them. They were a little late for Christmas, but the cargo was welcome. Constanza was thoroughly cleaned and scrubbed and sterilized and dehumidified and deodorized. And it had been a nightmare, but the nightmare was over. And the trip back was going to be a pure dream. No duck. Nothing to do but loaf and get soft after 18 weeks. Uh, oh, feel oh. that air. Smell that clean air-conditioned air. It's delightful. Captain, I'm going to enjoy this trip. Well, I'm going to have to juggle books. Otherwise, I'll get it when I get home. Oh, by the way, thanks very much for getting me off the spot, uh, Devery and Mac, too, with the commission, with that uh, radar gram you sent. My egg count was off. I know how many ducks died en route, about average, but I must have miscounted the number of ducks that didn't hatch. I was one short. Well, what'll they do? Here, have some more lens cleaner. Charge you 2,000 bucks for it? What in... Hey, fellas, look. An extra duck. Exploring tomorrow... That's our story for today. Heard in our cast were Maurice Tarplin, Bill Lipton, and Roger DeCoven. Script was by Peter Irving. Produced and directed by Sanford Marshall here in New York. Bill Maher speaking. We pause now for station identification.